What's up, guys? Jenna here, and back again for another awesome retro game hunt. Um, and this time we're at Doncaster Dome at the video game market. Now, I've been here a couple of times, and if you're familiar with my channel, you would have seen quite a few of these dome retro game hunts um, amidst the playlist. Now, I will say it didn't seem as busy as it usually is, and there were surprisingly a lot of empty stalls. I don't know if that was because of the snow or what, but nonetheless, I picked up a whole heap of stuff, spent about £200, so there will be a pickups video to follow on Wednesday so make sure you guys hit that sub button and hit that like and stay tuned for that video So I also took my little nephew Dylan with me, um, so you will see him in this video, bless him, he was really excited and he managed to pick up some cool stuff himself. And I just want to say guys, if you if you said hi to me, thank you so much, it was lovely to meet some of you guys and I really enjoy that because obviously I'm so grateful. Um, so thank you so much if you said hi. Now this is when we kind of initially got here um, and there was this kind of t-shirt stall and sword stall and obviously my nephew was mesmerised by the swords but I was like no. You're too young, we're not going to go down that road. Um, and then very shortly after we bumped into this store. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what it was called, but it was absolutely awesome. And later on in the day, I did spend about £90. I don't know whose hand that is, it certainly ain't mine. Um, but yeah, they, it was kind of bunched in, as, as it always is at, at retro gaming markets. You're shoulder to shoulder with people, um, which I don't mind. I really, really like it, actually. It's kind of part of the fun, is just getting in there, finding out those games. Um, and I will say again, and guys, in this video, you're going to see pretty much every single stall um, that I hit so stay tuned it's a nice 20 minute video um, again let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and a lot of you good people have been telling me the things that you bought as well so let me know if you went to Doncaster uh, video game market what did you buy what did you pick up let me know in the comment section below Now in this video you're going to be seeing a lot of Sega goodness, um, this is my nephew here clocking the NES controller belt uh, buckle, bless him, he really got stuck in to the game hunt as well, he was picking out games and it was just awesome to spend time with him. Um, but back to my original point, there will be some awesome Sega goodness, I needed to really pad out my Mega Drive and Master System games so I did pick up some nice stuff. Funnily enough guys, I only bought one boxed SNES game, which as you know the SNES is my favourite console console but I've said it I'm gonna be beefing out the Sega stuff I've recently got more shelves um, and it's made way for a hell of a lot more room so there's huge gaps on the shelf for, for Sega games um, now this go and check out my Instagram which will be up right here you'll see a better picture of what was in this cabinet now that Streets of Rage 3 game was in at 60 pounds so I was like wait a minute 60 quid for Streets of Rage 3 I'm going for it but unfortunately it didn't contain the manual and the cart was absolutely battered it was mildly sun damaged and it was ripped so I kind of figured if I'm gonna be getting a Streets of Rage 3 copy I want the best copy I could possibly find now I did see it again for 90 and 120 pound on this market I decided against buying it in the end because I picked up some other really awesome awesome stuff Now big boxed PC games is something you don't see a lot and although I didn't buy anything I kind of figured I'd capture a little bit of footage for you guys just to see if there's anything there that you would have picked up. Um, so some quite decent stuff, it was nice to see Tomb Raider big box, I saw that in a charity shop a couple of years ago. Sadly walked away from it, it would have been a nice shelf filler on the collection right there. Now we're just taking another look at this store, some really decent peripherals and then I, you'll see I think very shortly, this is my nephew again, um, again like I said really getting stuck into his retro gaming super proud auntie moment right here bless him um there was a sega genesis um game kind of like carrier game organizer there you go didn't see that around didn't pick it up because again it's not really something i'm particularly going to be using uh, but i thought it'd be awesome again to just capture some footage now guides retro game stuff uh, retro gamer magazine sorry did pick up a game guide for a gba game that i picked up from cx a couple of months ago now i want to say you may see some of the stuff that i pick up in this video Video. I think I paid a fiver and I did have a really really good look at some of the retro gamer magazines because I'm missing about 32 copies to complete my collection of retro gamer magazines um, so you know I didn't find any that I was missing but it, it may be a case I put another plea out to the community um, to sell me some because I, um, a very good 
uh, viewer, new subscriber, did sell me a load about a month ago, so that really helped my collection. So the footage you just saw there was me telling my nephew, or rather educating my nephew, that back in the day, games used to be on floppy disks, and he's, you can see him still picking up the stuff there. He was mesmerised, he was absolutely mesmerised, bless him. And then right next door to that, we were checking out some pop figures, there was some really nice art on different stores as well, which you're going to um, get a good look at, and Dylan again was absolutely loving the Aliens um, figures. Again, there's more pictures over on Instagram, so make sure you guys check the links in the description for all social media. And go and show some love on Insta, Facebook and Twitter. Now again, I want to know from you good people, did you get any figures? Is that something you would buy at a retro gaming market? Typically for me, it is an I'm there for games and consoles only. When I say consoles, I mean handhelds. And on that beautiful topic, guys, I did pick a very nice handheld up. I'm stoked to be able to show it to you in this week's upcoming pickups video. So this was something my nephew was completely mesmerised by, it was some Overwatch art with some additional art pieces. This actually was like really cheap and looked really, really awesome. Um, and had it not been for Dylan, I would have completely missed that. Now I said in the beginning of the video there were some stalls that unfortunately weren't filled. Um, so I don't know if it's a case of the, this market is shrinking a little bit, or if it genuinely was because of the really bad snow we've had in the United Kingdom recently. Um, luckily we all made it there and back safely. Now this was Lee's Deals. Oh my god! Lee's Deals is an absolutely amazing store. Um, and you can guarantee you'll always find really kind of rare stuff within Lee's Deals. It's absolutely awesome. Sometimes things are a little bit overpriced, sometimes things are absolutely on par. You will see Mr. Do, which you've probably already clocked right there. Um, I think that was going for like 80 quid. We had a bit of a debate on my Facebook page and a lot of you guys seem to think that that was overpriced. Now personally, I'm not familiar with the game so I don't know if that's a good price or not, but what do you guys think? Here it is, £80 for Mr. Do. Would you have paid it or would you have walked away? GameCube goodness, oh yes, it seems to be incredibly sparse for GameCube games, as well as Sega Dreamcast stuff, I didn't really see much of either, pretty much what you saw there in terms of GameCube was pretty much it. Now I did pick something up in here, a game that I have been after for quite some time, and I tend typically to shy away from unboxed games as, I guess that's just the kind of snobby collector side in me, but nonetheless I did pick up the Lamborghini game right there, it was three quid, kind of figured that that was a great deal for a game that I've been after for quite some time. Still over at Lee's Deals, we're going to take a look at some NES games right now. Um, I didn't actually clock until I'm filming this, like watching this back, that there was an NES cleaning kit. Kind of kicking myself not picking that up right there. But again, there's a nice range, loads of stuff, N64 stuff. Didn't pick up anything boxed for the N64, it was just the one unboxed uh, game that I managed to snag. I will typically only buy unboxed if I really, 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 really want to play the game. Um, but let me know, what do you prefer or do you not prefer? Boxed, unboxed, does it matter to you? Do you care? And how do you store your unboxed games? Let me know in the comment section below guys and we will keep hunting for retro games. And on that topic of unboxed games, here are a few Super Nintendo games. Again, didn't pick anything up, but I always like to get your, your feedback as to, would you have bought anything? Did you clock anything? Now, Pop and Twinby, flipping awesome game, 60 quid box. I own an unboxed copy, um, so I just kind of left it be, you know. Um, typically, that would be something I maybe would have bought. But again, I wanted to really focus my energy on this Sega stuff. 
Um, spoke, spoke about Sega Saturn recently with a couple of you guys over on social media and I've had some really nice recommendations on the Sega fronts. Um, so if anybody, if any of you are watching this video and you haven't recommended any Sega Saturn games, definitely let me know in the comments section below uh, what Sega Saturn games do I need to buy? Um, all the staple titles, but nothing overly rare. Um, I think I, I think I want to get start getting some nice rare titles on the Sega Saturn. More, more and more. Guys, I can't tell you how satisfying it is to see all this good stuff. Um, what do you look forward to the most when you go to retro gaming markets? Like for me, it's just like I get such a buzz. I get so much energy off seeing all this stuff. Um, really gives me like an overwhelming feeling. Um, and I really do like these videos because I do watch them back and it reminds me what I forgot to pick up. But then again, it just goes right back onto the list for next time. So I guess it's kind of like a really good piece of documentation really to do these videos. Um, now this I've never played Total Carnage on the SNES. Let me know if it's any good. Um, and it was priced in at £16, albeit the box was slightly battered. But nonetheless, not too bad. And it did come in a Sentinel case as well. So I guess that kind of takes the edge off it just a little bit. Back over to one of the earlier stores I hit up. Um, we got some decent Sega Saturn stuff here and some nice Game Boy Advance games, very good condition, priced in at £30, which I actually thought was a really good deal. Now, it was around this time when I started to spend, I guess, the big money. Um, you know, I, I think I spent about 90 quid here, not massive amount, but nonetheless, I did clock a few things on my first round, came back to it after we'd visited all the other stalls, and then picked up some really decent stuff. Um, wanted, I think, that one, I can't quite see the price on there, but I did want that game, but I think it was priced at a price I wasn't really willing to pay. Um, but I did specifically, I don't know whose hand that was, I uh, did specifically want to get some really decent say of goodness and I did pick up some stuff and I cannot wait to show you guys what I got in the pickups video later in the week. This was one of the stores as well that was like so busy. I mean, you can tell which stores when you go to a market like this are the most popular because there's just such a buzzing crowd around them. I mean, literally this, it was like shoulder to shoulder the entire time, it never seemed to die down. Unfortunately, there was no like name to the store, otherwise I'd give it a shout out. So if any of you guys are watching and you recognize where this was in the market, it was kind of like the furthest stall away diagonally from the entrance. It was in the very far corner. Um, if you know the name of the owner, massive, like, tell me who it is and we'll give them a massive shout out because there was some gnarly stuff here um, and I hope to see this, this vendor at future retro gaming markets. Now I'm kicking myself for not remembering if I had a Star Wars racer on the N64. It was only 10 quid. And I've since got home and realized I only have an unboxed copy. So I'm kind of like, I wish I'd have picked that up. Uh, but nonetheless, there'll be an, I'm sure there'll be another opportunity um, to kind of, you know, go in and buy that. Now, this is over at Retromnia, if I've pronounced that right. Again, a very, very good stall. Massive shout out to them. Go and check them out on Facebook and Twitter because they had some fantastic stock. And I believe they're based in Sheffield for those of you that are around um, the Midlands area if you want to go and check them out again. Uh, decent prices. Spent 80 quid here. Picked up one of my all-time dream Mega CD games. Ain't going to tell you what it is but if you know me well enough you might see me pick it up and put it back down in this video um so again all will be revealed i cannot wait to play it absolutely buzzing Okay, so hard driving. Anybody played it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, I really like that these vendors as well. It kind of had the stickers on that say complete with manual or complete without manual. Like for me, in these types of situations where you can't really always get everything out of the box, it's nice just to know exactly what you're picking up because I think that reflects on the price as well. Um, and I do think these guys are very, very fairly priced and really decent stuff. And as always, you got the really nice 
Uber kick ass stuff at the back there. Lost Vikings on the Sega Mega Drive for £30. Not too bad at all. A game that you typically don't see around that often, uh, but nonetheless, you know, really nice to see. Um, I wish I had a little bit more time already. Again, at this point, my nephew was saying, my back hurts, my head hurts. So we kind of went very shortly after this. And when I was like, oh, mate, you, you know, you're too young to, to have a backache. Let's just chill. Auntie Gemma's retro game hunting. Um, and he understood, bless him, he was a good sport. He actually picked out a Sega Master System game the only one that I picked up um, so I will I'll give I'll give thanks to him for that you may again see it in this video uh, but nonetheless um, thank you Dylan it was a great day my friend and I hope I can take you to the next one So we're still over at Retromnia um, and I saw Master of Darkness which was at 15 quid and I do have a copy of that. That is a bargain. Um, so if any of you are looking for a game that kind of is the Master Systems version of Castlevania, um, check out Master of Darkness because I think you'll really, really enjoy it. And again, £15 is a really decent price. Now I clocked again. Some awesome Sega Saturn games over at the back. 120 quid for that, by the way. What? Um, but I love these these more expensive games. I absolutely love like leaning over and taking a good look at what we've kind of got over here. Now, did I see Streets of Rage there for £75? Thankfully, I have it on the Sega Master System, so that's pretty cool. Um, got Final Fight CD as well. Again, really nice to see some mega CD games in this little hall here. And that at £40 again isn't too bad whatsoever. So let's keep bouncing with the Mega CD games. Um, your standard bunch of stuff right here. Uh, Batman Returns, kind of kicking myself for not picking that up, but I might contact Retromnia um, and get them to, to, well, sell it to me, basically. That's provided it wasn't sold. Mr. Do right there, £50. Again, we we saw it earlier for a hell of a lot more. Um, so again, a decent price, I guess, at 50 quid. Certainly better than 80. And then right when we were kind of like walking out, we did one last whip around. Um, my nephew did have some cash in his hand, but he didn't have enough. I gave him 20 quid, right? I gave him 20 quid and he kind of went through it. Um, and I said, look, mate, you know, you, you don't have enough money for that. Um, you should have saved it, you know? So I'm just kind of not being the evil auntie as such, but just teaching him that, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. And he was pretty cool he got some really decent stuff bless him I think he had an absolute blast DS games and Wii games unfortunately didn't see a great deal so it was quite nice to see a couple of, the, couple of them right here towards the end and then a whole heap of unboxed um, Game Boy games actually conveniently spread out in these folders which I've never seen and I've never really thought of how good of an idea it would be. I guess they're all kind of Pokemon um, card folders um, and Dylan right there was like can you buy me that PSP? I'm like dude Let's just backtrack a little bit. You've had 20 quid, <laughs> but go and ask your dad. So I think, Scott, if you're watching this, Dylan will be asking you for a PSP very shortly. Um, now, we did pick up something from here. He's a huge fan of Jack Septic, I bless him. I was trying to teach him about how bad of a person Logan Paul was, and my nephew completely defended Logan Paul's actions of what he did in the suicide forest in Japan. But nonetheless, um, I did try and say, look, you know, he was wrong. Don't watch anyone that's a dickhead. Don't be led to believe that they are heroes of YouTube because they ain't. So I think this was the first time I didn't pick up any PlayStation 1 games. Um, for the simple fact, it's because I kind of own most of the PlayStation 1 games that um, I want, really. And there was nothing on my list that said, you know, you've got to buy me, you've got to go for this. Um, but again, I just wanted to capture some stuff uh, just to show you guys, really, because, again, it's just nice to kind of watch back and get a reminder, you know, if I did miss anything, um, albeit PS1 games, then at least I've got it here on the video. Now, I apologise, camera's a little bit shaky, a lot of people bumping into me. Um, Ghouls and Ghosts, top game. That it has to be a game that I want to um, get, get get into my Sega Mega Drive collection. Um, 35 quid, let me know if you think that is a decent price. Personally, I don't think it is a bad price in the slightest.
All right, guys, as we draw to the end of this video, I just want to give you guys a massive shout out and thank you really for supporting my content. And again, for all of you that said hello um, at the gaming market, thank you so much. It's really nice to thank you in person for supporting my content. You guys are awesome. And I think that was a bootleg copy of Earthbound right there. Um, but yeah, right there, there it is. 500 quid for that. I was like, what? Um, so let me know if you think that was worth 500 quid. I would never spend 500 pounds um, unless it was factory sealed, which it wasn't. I don't think I've ever spent that much on a game, but let me know if you have and let me know what it was with. But for now, guys, if you are not subscribed to my channel, please hit subscribe and definitely leave a thumbs up and share the video with your friends if you went to this awesome gaming market. I'll definitely be back in June and there are more retro game hunts coming up, so stay tuned. Do not go anywhere. But for now, guys, have a beautiful day. My name's Gemma. Take care. See you soon.